Hello, my name is Floss. This is the Grape Jelly Library where we love to talk about books. And today I have no idea what we're going to do with this video. Stick around to find out. <music> Hello. Today I could come at you with some books that I am excited to share with you that I purchased before the Read What You Own Book Challenge. I could talk to you about the Read What You Own Book Challenge. I could talk to you about the two books or the one book that I read, the one book I'm pretty much going to DNF, or I can talk to you about Splendor in the Grass, the book that I am currently reading and loving. Hmm, what to do, what to do. I could talk to you about my two-year booktube anniversary. I could talk to you about the ins and outs of my daily life, both book related and non. What to do, what to do. Here's what we're going to do. We are just going to wing it. Whatever she will be, she will be. I'm not one for planning things out and mapping things out. Um, I just don't have the time to live that kind of lifestyle, although I so want to. You know, I'm not one for resolutions. No, I do like goals. But as far as structure goes, I don't think I'm very good at structure. I'm way better at winging it. So let's wing this video. Do I want to talk to you about the books that are in my hand, the books over yonder that are waiting to be showcased. Do I want to talk to you about the book that I am reading and loving the book that since the beginning of 2024, no other book can hold a candle to? Um, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to discuss this book, although I so want to. But it's like 50 some chapters long. How many chapters is it? It's 50 some. I know it. 58, 59, 59. 59 chapters long. I am on chapter 23. I just finished chapter 22, and this is where I'm at. What? What the what? That's where my present state of mind is. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you both now, and I'm going to tell you after I review it. Go get this get it. And then that's all I'm going to say right now about that book. I could talk to you about this book. <laughs> this book that I don't, I don't like. I don't dig it. You know, this book I have seen at my local bookstore. I did the audible version. I downloaded it before the Read What You Own Book Challenge. I had it in my library, curated with the rest of my books. And um, in the meantime, whenever I would frequent my Barnes & Nobles, I began to see it pushed right up the front on a table that said, like, the New York Times bestseller, some, something like that, uh, praise for this book number one book, um, just, you know, all the accolades. So I was like, you know what? I'm glad I downloaded that. And I have read a book by this author before, James McBride. I did not dig the book. What was the book? I will post it in my description. My apologies. I don't remember what that book was. Deacon 
Deacon Jones or something like that. Um, because it didn't resonate with me. His writing style. You know, it, the neurons aren't firing. So, um, I, you know, seven times, seven times I began to read this book. I would get so far in it, even to the point where I'm halfway through it. And I'm like, what? And I would start it over and start it over and start it over and start it over. And I'm sick of starting it over. And I vowed to myself that I was going to get through this book. And this was going to be the last time that I started it over. But you know what? Other than the character of Dodo, I just don't care about the other characters. I just don't care what's going on in this book. But I do care about the character Dodo. And I do want to know what happens to him. I reached a point in the book, I'm like halfway through, I reached a point in the book where it's the typical scenario is spelled out where something terrible happens. Someone who is not very well off in their, in their state of being extends a helping hand and then gets blank. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's one of those things where you're like, oh my God, here we go again. It's the underdog that gets blamed by the whole community. And now, you know, this underdog who's already had enough hills to climb has even steeper hills. And I just, I just cannot stand that type of setup. I don't like that plot. I don't like that kind of drama. I'm out. So no, this is a no for me. If you loved it, you know, that's fine, fine and dandy. And I am so glad that you did. I am trying, I am trying my hardest to like, it, but I, I don't. And I love the character of Dodo, but I don't like what's being done to Dodo and my heart can't handle it. My heart can't handle it. <sighs> Reading should be fun, right? This is, this is not a fun book to me. All right. I can talk to you about this book. I was so looking forward to this book. This book was a gift to me. And I um, always appreciate a gift. Always. Um, so looking forward to reading it. What did I think about it? Not enough to dedicate a video to it. Too many potions, concoctions, spells, um, black magic, white magic, what have you. You know, and this book is very unstable. What did Marie Laveau look like? They'll go on in great detail explain, explaining to me what her features were. And then they will capsize it with, but this is speculation. No one really knows what she looked like. And I'm all like, well, then why did you just Tell me all of that. Why did you just waste my time and make me believe and, you know, thought provoke me into conjuring up this image of her only to tell me false? And then not only did you do it there, but you're going to do it here and here and here. I'm out. I read the book. I completed it. I'm not a fan. Okay. Okay. Death Valley, Melissa Broder. I'm a fan. This is my first Melissa Broder novel. And I did look up to see if she wrote any other books because I am telling you. Yeah, I am telling you. I love her writing style. I love it. I'm not going to discuss this book because I do want to do a video dedicated to this one. This one is a book gem. It's book gold. Can you see it shimmering 
and shining. It is splendor in the grass. And, you know, it, it deserves a video of its own. So, one out of three. Yeah, that's probably bad. <laughs> but I am good with that. Okay, how am I doing so far? All right, now, I'm kind of like, I don't know. I'm all over the place with my emotions because it's been a rough week. We had a dilemma at work and I knew it was going to be one of those things where I was going to be the person to have to solve it and then bring forth the answer to everyone and then have the answer be reiterated to me on a daily basis for the duration of the week. And that is exactly what happened. And I got no thanks for solving the mystery. And, you know, so I was very frustrated with that. And on top of that, I was dealing with a cat, my cat, that was slowly passing away. So, you know, every day I'm trying to see this cat cross the Rainbow Bridge peacefully and lovingly, but my, my nerves, just a ball of nerves because of work and because of, all right, leave work in work. When we're home, we're focused and, you know, we're focused on our cat, Sabrina. And, um, you know, she did go peacefully. She did go peacefully. And I'm thankful for that. And um, this is a cat that did not necessarily like me. She, I won't say she spawned of me. She was a rescue cat. I brought her home when she was a kitten um, right before the cold weather set in. It was just breaking my heart to know that this kitten was going to be left outside in the cold. And I just couldn't. I couldn't have, have that. And, you know, my husband says, no more animals, no more cats. Don't bring another cat home. And I'm like, shut up. This cat needs a home. Shut up. <laughs> so I brought her home and he took care of her and he loved her and she loved him. But me, eh, not so much. She didn't love me so much. And, um, you know, I'm okay with that. But as she slowly left this earth, she did allow me to pet her and she did allow me to, you know, assure her that it was going to be all right. And, um, you know, let her know that she's loved and that we're going to miss her. And that. Okay. So it hasn't been exactly the best of weeks but this is life and it is what it is and i cannot do anything about it so i have to accept it and that's what i'm doing i'm accepting it i apologize because i i have my moments every now and again i have my moments but anyways i'm up in the library and I am participating in the Read What You Own book challenge. And I have to say, I am slow but steady. I'm not in a hurry. I actually thought I was going to go to my Barnes & Noble's um, yearly half-off hardcover book sale. And surprisingly, I didn't go. I did not attend. That shocked me. You know, it did. But um, I'm content reading the books that I have. And I so look forward to reading the books that I have because as I peruse my library, upstairs and downstairs, in the parlor, in the living room, in the kitchen, I have to say to myself, I have some wonderful books. Uh, maybe I have good book taste because I cannot wait to get to the majority of them. So the Read What You Own book challenge, it's a good thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love to buy books. It brings me happiness. And, you know, I will wear threadbare clothes over and over and over 
and I'll be like fine with it. But I need to buy my books. But thus far, January, what are we, Jan, what are we, January, I don't know, 16, 17, something like that. I'm okay. I'm good. Um, I'm good with reading what I own. So I'm going to let you go now to do your thing. And I'm going to go do mine. And that is read some more of this wonderful book. I cannot wait to bring you a book review and some pertinent information on this book. Until then, know that I love you, be well, be good, be reading, and may all your book dreams come true.